Hi there. I thought I'd share with you today this lovely little OS engine that I recently acquired. And this is the OS PET 099. And this version came out in 1960. But the origins of this engine are a lot older. The first engine of this series came out in 1954 and there's been various changes since then. And like I say, this is the 19... Uh, 60s version and it's a glow engine. Now if we take a closer look at this now we can see this is a lovely looking glow engine and you can see the PET OS 099 and the 0, 099 that is basically the size designation in cubic inches. In actual fact I think it's 0 0.098 but I guess I guess the 0.99 just sounds a lot better and that's 1.6 cc and if we turn it over we can just see there 1.6 I, I think this is a lovely lovely looking engine I just love the shape of the crankcase and these black fins and this is in really good condition so I'm, I'm really pleased if we take a look at the back here we can see that there's provision there for a tank that will have been screwed in the center there you just see the uh, the, the threaded uh, the hole there and this recess here where the tank would have been fitted in. I don't have a tank unfortunately but I'm going to get this in the test stand and I'm going to run it off a, a, a separate tank. Now this needs a, a, a prop washer that came with this one originally which is way too big so we'll get rid of that but we'll, we'll have to find a, a prop washer to go on there. You can see here the needle valve is missing and originally they not only had the needle valve and used it just as a, 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 an engine without RC but you could get a fitment that went in there which was a very rudimentary uh, throttle carb which didn't work particularly well but I'm sure this will be a great engine without the carb just with this Venturi and a needle valve and I've managed to get a needle valve from a later model, uh, fairly cheap, managed to pick this up which I'm really pleased about and we can see here it's the PET 3099 so it's the same size engine but it's just a, a later version and I think this version came with a, a, a muffler but, uh, but, but this one didn't so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and clean this up with as little intervention as possible because it's moving freely it doesn't look that dirty so we'll we'll see how clean we can get it and then we'll have a quick look at it before we get it in the test stand and see how this thing runs well i know i said i wasn't going to completely strip it but i ended up doing that anyway and it looks in really nice condition there's not much wear on the crankshaft uh, not much play it's really nice nice snug fit the piston itself doesn't look uh, very worn at all and uh, there's a little bit of carbon on the top here now I thought this might have a being a cast iron piston I thought it might have a baffle on the top but it's actually got a, a step out on the inlet side and it's funny looking at this because it's very reminiscent of some of the diesel engines I've been looking at recently and I guess if this was first developed in the 1950s, early 1950s, glow engines were in their infancy then, whereas the market was awash with different designs of English uh, diesel and uh, also from other countries as well. Now you can see there's a, a gasket in here where the cylinder just sits down on top of that, very similar to some of the, uh, the, the diesel engines I've seen recently. But anyway, I'm going to give this a good clean up now. I'm going to be fairly careful and just use a toothbrush and some hot water and I think a lot of this will just come off. It's not really baked on. So we'll have a look anyway and see how clean we can get it. Right, well I've got this back together now and I'm really pleased. The, the crankcase has come up absolutely lovely. And all I've done is scrub this with a toothbrush and a little bit of uh, soap. Cylinder still lovely and dark 
but nice and clean. So that's gorgeous. I really, really like. Uh, I really like that. I haven't touched the crankshaft. Haven't touched the piston because I just they look fine and there's no point in messing with them. The head would have been nice if it cleaned up a little bit more, but I didn't want to get too heavy and too abrasive on it. So hopefully that will be okay. You can see the the old gasket here came apart, which was the seal between the cylinder and the crankcase. When I took that out, it left some of the gasket on the crankcase and some of it on the cylinder. So I've, I've made another one and it's fairly straightforward. You can see there's a couple of slots out there which allow for the uh, for the screws in the cylinder and there's a bit of a crescent out in the side of the gasket here which just allows for the inlet port. I don't know whether that shows but there's an inlet port there and there's a little bit of a chamfer just to uh, just to improve efficiency. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get this nicely oiled and back together and we'll see what it looks like. Right, well I've now got this engine back together and I am really pleased with it. It not only looks great, but the compression seems really nice. I'm really pleased with that. It sounds lovely. I think this is probably quite a low runtime engine. And I've got the needle valve in. I'll tell you what, we'll take a quick closer look at this now. Well, as I said, this has come up absolutely lovely. I'm, I'm really pleased with it and it didn't take a lot of work. Okay, it wasn't in a really bad condition, but I think this is probably quite a nice low runtime engine. And we can see the needle valve fits really nice, but of course we won't know until we actually get it running whether it's right, but I think it should be. Well, all that's left now is to get this lovely 1960s OS engine into the test stand and see how it runs. Well, I've got this lovely little OS 1.6cc engine clamped in the test stand now and I'm dead excited to see how it runs. I've got an 8x4 prop on it and I'm going to be running it on this Model Technics Duraglow which is 5% nitro. I'm going to be really careful how much fuel I put in the tank. If I fill the tank up, it's just going to siphon it down into the engine and flood it. So I'm going to try and get the level of the fuel level with the spray bar and uh, hopefully that will be fine. There's no pressure feed on this because there's no muffler. Uh, no muffler was supplied as far as I understand when this engine was, uh, was introduced in 1960. So I'll get it fueled up now and we'll see how it runs. Well, that runs lovely, doesn't it? 11,000 11, RPM is, uh, is a really good speed for that. I'm really pleased. It was uh, a little bit hot adjusting the needle because of the, <laughs> the exhaust outlet on my fingers. But anyway, I'm really pleased with that and I can't wait to get that into a model. A 1960s engine running absolutely beautifully. Anyway, it's starting to rain here now, so time to pack up but I hope you enjoyed that I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed actually getting the thing running <laughs>